welcome back to another episode of Voices Talk Show. I am very excited to be here today with my brand new panel. This is an all black panel for the very first time, so I'm really excited to be doing that. Um, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys an opportunity to introduce yourselves. My name is Lionel Ciceron. I live and work in this community, and I have two children with my beautiful wife, Josette. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Taylor, I am a uh, community leader here. I work uh, at a church and I work with youth students uh, in District 206. My name is Robert Cumberbatch and I work and live in the Alexandria area. My name is Leandra Collier and I recently just moved out of Alexandria. So how do you feel locally in the time that we're in right now being in our community I mean, this year has been filled with everything from the pandemic to George Floyd to the recent, you know, um, verdict. I guess it's not even a verdict since no one was really even charged um, for Breonna Taylor. Mm. And, and overall, it's, it's a really intense year. So how are you doing here locally? Uh, I, I was just speaking with a, a very dear friend, uh, you know, before I came here and uh, she was expressing just kind of her opinion and and her feelings about like all of it and just how how there's so much let's call it disdain um you know for mentioning things that maybe you don't directly relate to uh because it doesn't directly affect your people group mm -hmm. you know and uh the black community is a very unique and uh, interesting people group mm -hmm. uh, and not everyone relates to it so Right. Yeah, and I, I think that's something um, that's really hard here because it's the visibility of us um, yeah. because we definitely get noticed. We just aren't acknowledged or uplifted or represented anywhere in the community. And I think that that's probably been the hardest to cope with since I moved here five years ago. And that combined with the outright racism that I experienced directly mm. it it's lonely it's a lonely feeling and and I just want to know like if you guys are experiencing that or have experienced that what do you think Rob? With the things that are going on um, and not to point one party out or another but it's just as we get closer to the election you're starting to hear more of the things mm -hmm. that you start to take the heart that kind of hurt mm -hmm. you know and then th there's a lot of untruths, you know, in the, pe the way people view, you know, our community based on what someone says mm -hmm. it is versus what we know it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that racism exists, but it's just, it seems that from that time to now, it's just become so much greater than it was before. Not that it ever went away, but it's just like more blatant now. It's mm -hmm. out there for you to see. And, uh, it's, it's just unfortunate. Um, and I think it's important for our community to hear from the people who actually live these lives, who are actually black <laughs> and experiencing it, to hear like what we think that is and what that means to us as individuals. Um, for me, Black Lives Matter is simply a true statement. It is, um, it, it is everything that I am and work for and have been, and it makes me feel like, you know, there's some level of like hope later on that that will actually not be something we have to keep saying, but yeah. someone's noticing that mm -hmm. there's a discrepancy somewhere. And so it's a comforting phrase to me um, when it comes to the organization and what they do. I support them because I know they're trying to do positive things to end right. the war on racism, on us, on our bodies, on our future kids. And I, and it, to me, it's so important that my children realize that their lives really do matter because I didn't believe it. And I think I'm still having a hard time believing it. So in a way, it's like comforting myself right. saying it. You know, Black Lives Matter, I think it's, it's an important group. Because like you said, just just the name of the group says so much. You know, those people say, okay, no, we're going to do this quiet protest. This is, this is a protest. We're not being violent. We're going to walk. 
you know, we may say chants, sing songs, but we're not doing anything violent. Mm -hmm. And so they began to do that. And then they had people from the outside who said, okay, no, this is no, it's, it's going too good for their community. We need to show what we want to be shown about them. We need to change the scenario of what people see. And so they begin to have people come out there and they're going and setting banks on fire. They're going mm-hmm. and doing this. And then I watch other people, you know, get together and say, hey, no, we're not doing this here. Yeah. Yeah. This is not what it's about. And so I, I really think that is what it is. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm really tired of the narrative being spun in the media with them associating Black Lives Matter and Antifa to terrorist groups and correlating the two. And you see the people that are going out and purposefully setting things on fire and breaking windows. Mm -hmm. And just so the groups can get blamed for it, just so Trump has more fodder for his his base. And it's it's getting really bad out there. What's it like being here and having that energy at work around you? Uh, It's it's isolating. I mean, I can't lie. It does get lonely at work. I mean, and, and now it feels like I think there was an incident where I did let a coworker have it, kind of, you know, with, with everything else going on. Cause, and we kind of haven't talked about politics since then. It's probably why we don't talk about it, honestly. But mm-hmm. it, was, it was only after the George Floyd you know, murder happened that I actually spoke up and said something. It had been going on you know, this whole year, parts of last year, and I just haven't really spoken up. And since then, it just set a fire under me that it's like, I'm gonna have to say something every single time mm-hmm. have to come correct with people every single time yeah. but in doing that though again you put yourself in a corner and nobody wants to associate with you so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty controversial it's mm-hmm. pretty easy to get isolated when you when you have an opinion one way or the other and mm-hmm. um so i'm gonna take the uh, the opposite opinion uh because my struggle with black lives matter right now is like when our when our little black boys and girls get caught in the crossfire and nobody goes and says anything mm-hmm. you know i if we're gonna if we're really gonna say it like i want it to be for everything and so when i think about those things and when we come together and we value education we value the family we value all of those things that are important um then and only then will the 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 organization or the movement of black lives matter actually be important to all people mm-hmm. you know and yeah. i think that a lot of a lot of people don't take it seriously because we sometimes don't take ourselves seriously yeah. right and yeah. and it and it sucks it, it sucks because when you're educated and when you make moves to to try to better your community mm-hmm. and then you have those that are like eh, no yeah no and, and i understand that just being in this community yeah, yeah. Um, i realize that um, not every black person wants to be a social justice warrior right. i'm well aware of that and i don't need you to be right i just need you to do better <laughs> Right. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, I just need you to do better. You don't have to. You don't have to go out and fight every battle. You mm-hmm. don't even have to go to the march. That's fine. Yeah. Stay in your house. That's cool. Just like do better, because because gotcha. the the at the end of the day, a lot of the luxuries that we enjoy were built on our backs. Mm-hmm. So that's right. if that's gonna be true, like I nobody owes me anything. Mm-hmm. One of the hardest things for me, um, being in this community is because there's this air of like you know it's almost like that old school master slave feeling of like we have to be grateful (laughs) Mm. for the fact that you're even living here like of course be grateful for that little job that we we threw your way be grateful that you get to you know even live in a place forget about the place might be falling apart and you can't you can't even like get someone to show you uh, a property mm-hmm. that's actually good that forget about that we gave you this space and y- you should be grateful for it yeah i get it we're not that many here mm-hmm. but we're still a community we're still people and yeah. and that's difficult when you feel like you're always in a fight to like just be treated normally to be treated human and i think that comes back to like microaggressions and that's something we live with on a regular basis what does that feel like what are some examples of microaggressions and just straight up racism you've experienced when you talk about microaggressions like i think about um i think about those who look at you and say how did you get here yeah i get that question what what are you doing what are you doing here and who let you in Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. um i 
I have a different experience than most because my mother-in-law was the Chamber of Commerce director. So mm -hmm. my experience has been pretty good. Um, but I, I look at my brothers and sisters in the community and I go, you probably don't have the same access that I do. Come with me. Yeah. Right? right? So how do, like, how do we, how do we, how do we do that? How do we live with that? How do we, like, walk that out, you know? Because sometimes you get, you get a, you get a brother or sister that gets up here mm -hmm. and you forget about everybody else that's back yeah, there, yeah. right? So I'm curious to hear about you guys' experience because mine has been, it's probably been better than most. Well, I'd say because when I'm usually out in the community, I'm usually at work anyway because I don't like to be out. I, 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 I don't go out <laughs> for, for that reason. I don't, I, don't, I don't feel safe in this community like that, especially, mm. especially now. I had a coworker, a young coworker, just still in high school, actually saying the n-word just frivolously at work like it's perfectly fine i had to pull him aside like what are you doing mm -hmm. you know and he's like oh it's I, I i got permission from a friend he got permission from a friend you know and i i, I tried to explain to the kid like i didn't get angry with him i i tried to explain to him though like you know it's wrong to say that right like even though you may hear us say it, like it doesn't give you the right to say it it's like oh it's 2019 um. What does that have to do with this? <laughs> That's exactly why you should know better. It, it, it was racist back then. It's still racist now. Like, right. you need to stop saying it. And I, I realized he was like, that's him and all of his friends felt that way. Mm -hmm. And these incidents were piling up. You know, I have another person. Oh, I'm from Cali. I can say it. I have another friend give me permission. Like, for real? You know, and he said it in front of, of, of a manager of mine. Yeah. He did nothing about it. Yeah. He just didn't say anything about it. So it was co-workers who defended me. Because I kept telling them, like, you need to stop saying it. Because I was getting upset. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the time for it. I, I, I've, I had enough by that point, you know. And it feels like even at most of these workplaces, they hear stuff all the time. Back home, people would say it in whispers, you know. No one would say it out loud. No one was bold enough to say it. That Here, you can say it better. without repercussion. You can do it all the time. Mm -hmm. We had another co-worker. Just the same job. He act, we actually complained on this guy because he was being he was being racist towards all the, the foreign students that were there and nothing happened. He was allowed to keep his job. They just talked to him and he was allowed to still work with us. And I was like, what? <laughs> really? <laughs> like, I, in, you know, I, 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 I didn't necessarily quit the job. But I never went back, though, after at the winter time because I just I'm not going to put myself through that. Like. I'm never gonna put myself to that again. And it feels like that's just how this community is as a whole. Like, mm. this stuff is just normal here. Th mm -hmm. They were used to it when there wasn't m much of us here. And now there's more of us here and we're getting to see all that. We didn't come here on our own accord. We were literally ripped away from our land, stripped of our identities. And, there was, and once we went through all these things, you went from slavery to, to um, the, the, the black codes and all those other laws mm -hmm. that just kept the system going, the system that we still today keep claiming there's no systemic racism. Mm -hmm. That's the system we're still operating on. We were literally still in chains when this constitution was written out. It was never made for us, Correct. though we built it. And we Correct. built this country and we haven't been we haven't seen um, just the acknowledgement, the grace, the understanding, the it, it's, it's hard when you're dealing with people who put you in a situation and this is what your ancestors did. But now we're here and you're telling me to get over it. But I'm still struggling. You're, mm -hmm. You've got generations of wealth already built up, mm -hmm. but I'm still over here trying to make ends meet and pay my light bill. And, and the fact that you don't see that, that discrepancy is probably the most hurtful part of the entire experience. So I think that it, this is probably one of the first, you know, panels that looked like this in Alexandria. So I really want to make sure that I give you guys the opportunity to share what is it that you would like this community to do to make you feel seen, heard, valued. Just don't be so assuming when you when you see us. Like really just forget the stereotypes. Yeah, you know, the implicit biases that are reside in this town, it's it's really bad. Just take a time out and actually talk to someone without having, you know, any expectations, you know? That's what I'd say. What do you think, Leandra? Um, 
uh, you know, I think it's a good idea to take the time to talk to talk to me. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I'm a person just like you. You know, don't assume and stop with the so you know the, this high thinking of yourself that no one else is as good as you. Mm-hmm. You know, st- you know we're all human beings. We all should be looked at in that way. Yep. I agree. I just want to see people stuff because there's, there's a lot of people in the community that are good people that you know have our interests at heart mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh and like i said it only takes a handful to swell that and i would just like to see you know more people step up so when you're at work and somebody says something you shouldn't have to be the one to always say hey that's wrong mm-hmm. it should be the supervisor it should no be the company right oh. yeah let people know that that's not okay and and that really that's the only way that this is going to get any better is starting at that lower level and just saying to that friend hey you know you might think that that's funny or whatever but it's it's not okay you know i don't agree with it you know and when you start doing that on a regular basis then people will start maybe they'll start to get it you know for me it's uh there's been some really great people that have embraced me and loved me and and helped me to get places that i would have never gotten on my own you know I, i acknowledge that uh, a lot of the things that I'm able to do, are, it's really because others have kind of cleared the way or, or, or helped to make a way. Um, and also what, what I would like to see the community do is to basically do everything that you guys just said, right? Mm-hmm. Don't laugh at the racist joke. Mm-hmm. Don't stand by and, and come up with your own joke, mm-hmm. right? And don't make me the butt of your joke yeah. because there's only so much that people can take. and when i what i've come to see is that after people that look like me have had all they can take and then they respond in a way that Mm -hmm. you keep saying they're going to then all of a sudden it's see i told you look Mm -hmm. at look at that's what i I was looking for i i I told you they would Mm -hmm. i knew they would Mm -hmm. i knew he or i knew she was like this right but nobody talks about the constant pushing, the pu- yes. the constant, yes. the constant poking and prodding, right? The pressure bust pipes. And yeah. so pressure does bust pipes. You mm-hmm. are absolutely right, sir. You're going to care about people. Care about people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All of them. All of them. Just be absolutely. human. All God. lives matter. I get it. I get it. Sick of hearing it. But until my life matters, then that's a false statement. Yeah. Think about the person of color, you know, for that higher position, you know, think about that person of color for, you know, dinner party at the dinner party or take bringing them in and, you know, and don't expect that one person to be your teacher. Come to meet that person with some level of understanding, at the very least, just listen, listen to the things that are important to us and these things, these things that are happening right now in our country, they didn't come out of nowhere. We didn't just wake up one morning and start burning things down. We literally are revolutionizing right now. We are fighting a war and it's a war to keep our kids from having to live this life. And, and, And that's what it always comes back to me with because I just don't want my babies to be going through the same things that I'm going right. through mm-hmm. and, and the same mental breakdowns that I deal with yeah. on a regular basis because I want them to understand just how powerful and beautiful and important they truly are. I definitely think there will have to be a part two because mm-hmm. there's so much we didn't get to get into um, and, and maybe that'll be like a bonus episode, who knows, but we'll figure it out because mm-hmm. I think that this has been a long time coming and I think that it's important to hear directly from the people who are experiencing the pain. You cannot tell somebody how to process their trauma and their pain. The most you can do is support them, elevate them and help them move forward and that's going to take you taking a step back as a white person and that's going to take you meeting them with empathy and love and not going in with your own preconceived ideas of Mm -hmm. what you want them to turn out to be or where you want them to go with you. So thank you again for coming and being part of this. Thanks for inviting us.